my name is Ellie Mulrath, and I'm a Park Program Assistant with Sonoma County Regional Parks. And we are here at Crane Creek Regional Park, which is the traditional homeland of the Great Rancheria and Southern Pomo peoples. And on behalf of Sonoma County Regional Park and myself, I would like to acknowledge the past, present, and future generations of Great Rancheria and Southern Pomo tribal members and their connection to this land. We are here today in a beautiful oak woodland habitat. Does anyone know what a habitat is? A habitat is a home for plants and animals where they have all the things that they need to survive, such as food, water, shelter, space, and clean air. Here in an oak woodland habitat, you might see beautiful rolling grasslands, um, of course, oak trees, bay trees, buckeye trees, um, poppies, other wildflowers, and also many different animals. Can you think of what animals might live here? When I think of the animals in an oak woodland habitat, I think maybe of birds, I think of bobcats or mountain lions, I think of smaller animals that rely on the grassland. And then within that larger habitat, we have many smaller habitats. And this oak tree here is actually a habitat that can provide homes for hundreds of different species. What do you think could depend on this oak tree for survival? Maybe they could use it for shelter, maybe for food. When I think of an animal that might depend on this oak tree here, I first off think of birds, maybe something like a woodpecker that stores its acorns inside the oak tree. I think of mosses and lichens and other plants that grow in a relationship with the oak tree. And I also think of insects. One of my favorite habitats that you can find on an oak tree is called a gall. Have you ever seen a gall before? These galls are found hanging off the trees. And let's take a closer look at this gall here. Here I have a few different oak galls and we are going to take a closer look. What do you notice about these oak galls as you're closely observing? I notice that they are round and there are two of them attached to the same spot on this branch here. What do you wonder about them? I wonder why this one here has all these different patterns and colors on it. And what does it remind you of? They remind me of little apples or maybe little pieces of fruit. Can you guess what might make their home inside of this gall? These galls are actually made by one of my favorite insects called the oak gall wasp. And the oak gall wasp is not like the kind of wasps we think of when we think of a wasp that might be at our picnic or barbecue, trying to eat our food or may even sting us. These oak gall wasps are very small smaller than a grain of rice. The gall wasp is so small that you might not even be able to see it with a human eye. Gall wasps have a very interesting life cycle. The female gall wasp finds the perfect oak tree to lay her eggs. She'll either lay them at the base of the tree or she'll lay them on a leaf. Once the egg hatches into a larva, the larva begins to eat the leaf. As it eats, it releases a chemical which causes the tree to grow a gall around the larva. This gall is a perfect habitat for the larva because it provides all the things that a creature needs in a habitat. It provides shelter from predators that might want to try to eat it, and it also provides food for the larva as it spends months inside the gall growing into an adult. They actually don't need water during this stage, so water is not required. Once that larva has grown and matured and is ready to turn into an adult, it actually uses its mouth to drill through the gall and then escapes through a tiny hole where it flies off to find a new spot to lay its eggs if it's a female. This, this um, adult stage only lasts for a few weeks and so the gall wasp spends most of its life in this larva stage living inside the gall. A gall that is empty, that has no wasp left inside, will be drier 
it will have a little hole inside where the gall has wasp has crawled out and then the galls that still have a wasp living inside will be more of a greener color and that's where the term oak apple comes from you may have heard that term before that's another word for an oak gall because they do kind of look like little apples there are actually hundreds of different of gall species gall wasp species in the world and here in california we have 90 different species like i said before the oak tree is actually able to support hundreds of different plants and animals on its branches and on its leaves and if we take a closer look at this tree we can actually see a variety of different galls living on this one oak tree as we take a closer look at this oak tree we start to see many different galls attached to the leaves. We already talked a little bit about the oak gall, the apple oak gall, and here we can see an, an urchin gall, and then there's also some red cone galls. They look a little bit like Hershey's Kisses. And like I said before, there's 90 different kinds of galls here in California. So one oak tree can support many different species, and even one leaf can support many different species. Here's a leaf that has a ton of those tiny little cone galls that look like little Hershey's Kisses. And each one of those only has a single wasp larva inside. So you can imagine how small the larva are and how small those adult wasps are when they emerge. These ones here are the turban galls. And I love that the galls have funny, silly names that really reference the shape of the gall themselves. And then here we have a blister gall named for, you guessed it, the blisters that we might get if we injure our hands. And then of course, oak trees also support a variety of mosses, lichen, many other different insects, birds, and then mammals as well will use the oak tree for shelter. Look everyone, I actually see an oak gall growing on the tree here. Does it look like this one still has a wasp inside or do you think the wasp has drilled its way out and is now flying around as an adult? If we look very closely at this oak gall, you can actually see the hole where the wasp has drilled its way out. Now that we've talked about how important these oak galls are to the gall wasp life cycle, we're going to talk a little bit about human use. How do you think a human might use this oak gall? There are actually a variety of different uses for this gall here. Galls contain tannins, which are used to tan hides. If you've ever eaten a grape that is a little bit sour and makes your mouth pucker, then you have eaten a tannin. Communities around the world have used these oak galls for centuries. Asian communities use the oak gall as a disinfectant because it has antibacterial properties. Some Native American communities used it to treat cuts and burns and eye infections. And people around the world actually use this oak gall to create ink. For thousands of years, this was the main ingredient in the ink that was used to write histories, to write novels, even books like Journey to the Center of the Earth may have been written with oak gall ink. I find it amazing that this small little insect home has been used throughout human history for such a wide variety of things. Thank you for coming out and exploring and learning about oak galls with me today at Crane Creek Regional Park. I encourage you to come out and visit with your family. And as you are walking, make sure to look up in the oak tree branches and you just may see an oak gall hiding among the leaves. Thank you so much and have a great day.